This is Jason Christopher, and you're watching Slasher Pepper. Enjoy that shit, motherfuckers. Hey guys, Slasher Pepper, and welcome to another interview. Today, I'll be interviewing Jason Christopher, uh, who played bass on the solo album for Corey Taylor, uh, in Ministry, and M Prong, and many other bands. How are you doing? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm glad to have you on the show. Thanks. I also sang all the high shit on the CNT <laughs> record. Very high. Just want everybody to know that. For sure. <laughs> uh, so my first question was, how has 2020 been for you? Have you gotten any new hobbies with all the lockdowns and, you know, staying at home all the time? I mean, I really didn't have to switch it up much. I'm an introvert. I'm a homebody. I like, you know, I mean, I like going out, and whatever, but like, for the main, like, I didn't really have to change much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Awesome. Like, except for, like, you know, I'm usually over there this time of year. I'm usually in Europe, you know? I'm not working as kind of, I mean, I've been working, but, like, not touring has definitely sucked. Right. Not, not being able to take advantage of the opportunities that Corey's presented us with and stuff is, you know, I mean, it'll come, but, but whatever. I'm just kind of hanging out, finished my second book. and uh, Awesome. I got a kid. He's eight, so he's a handful, for sure. So I definitely keep. I'm definitely busy. Yeah, cool. Well, just have patience for the for the touring. Yeah, for sure, man. Um, and then of all albums that you played on, which one are you most proud of? The CMFT record, for sure. I worked really hard on that. I like had to do. I did personally for myself. I took when Corey called us and asked us if, if we were down to do the record when the pandemic hit. I personally took a month to myself to mentally and physically prepare because for me, that stuff's not easy. Like I have to work really hard. I'm not like a savant like Corey. Like Corey could just sing, you know what I mean? Corey could just play. I can't, I have to, I have to run three miles a day up a mountain if I want to be like, ha, you know, like I can't. <laughs> That doesn't just come naturally. So I quit smoking. I, I just started exercising daily. I changed my diet. And um, so I'm really happy with the results from that record. You know, like I was able to perform for my best friend and that was rad. You know, I was able awesome. to do the job that he needed done. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, I love the album, so. Yeah, it's great. Thank you very much. And a it was lot all of worth it. You could do it, you know, like a lot of people are like, oh, I could do that. It, you know it's hard <laughs> yeah it's the pressure the mental pressure you're in a booth you got everybody staring at you through a window you gotta like get it in one or two takes or they start looking at you weird you know what i mean like, <laughs> right pressure. yeah there's a lot more that comes with it than just playing the bass right for sure Everybody thinks they could do it till like it's time to do it and that's yeah that's that's, that's with a lot, lot of people, things why a lot of people can't they don't do it you know? yeah they don't they don't push themselves to do it Right. Or they just think they can, but then they can. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. A lot of those out here. <laughs> and um, what's your favorite part about touring? My favorite part about touring is, man, I, like my favorite thing to do is wake up in the morning and just like go, go explore unknown territory to me. You know, like I remember when I first started touring, like because Prawn went to Europe a lot and I was I was with them for like eight years, you know, and um, we were over there like twice a year easily. And um, I would just wake up in the morning and like go walk around these little German towns and smell the fresh air because I'm in L.A. I don't get real fresh air anymore. <laughs> Everything is just. It's all just buildings and condos and 7-Elevens and it's crap unless you go to the beach or whatever but so like just traveling getting to eat the different foods and you know hanging out with random girls all over the place is pretty fun too you know i just i hate flying so i really oh yeah me too my least favorite thing is flying but my my uh most favorite thing is just checking shit out you know yeah for sure i i would imagine that that would probably be my favorite thing too you know, just new territory, like you said, and yeah, new and, territory, uh, new food, new people. Yeah, it's always it's always an adventure. Even if I've been to a place before, you know, 
like oh, Luxembourg. Yeah. Luxembourg is like a super small place and but it's got like this great curry stand that I love and this real cool Italian joint around the corner and you know like I just always look forward to going back so I can't wait till this shit opens up oh yeah must be uh well again just patience um and how did you and Corey meet that's a funny story actually um we were at there i was at the rainbow bar and grill which is a the oldest rock bar oh yeah coolest rock bar in the world you know lemmy always used to hang out there didn't he yeah it was just they got a little lemmy's lounge is in the back corner yeah, and stuff, exactly. actually, that's actually right where we met <clears throat> wow there's a back bar on the back patio of the rainbow where the lemmy statue is now and um but before the lemmy statue it was just lemmy being a statue and um <laughs> i was it was when we both were drinking so i was completely shit-faced and uh i'm a loud drunk i like jack and cokes and a lot of cocaine and just i like to be the center of attention and so does Corey. so we were these like this is our these are our backs and we were like at the bar it was like a friday night or a saturday night it was packed and we were rah, 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 just both yelling like opposite directions and then our backs touched and we were like wow and it was just like rah, 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 and, we almost <laughs> and then a mutual friend of ours was like wait you guys need to hang out and we were like rah, rah. And then like, we literally just started hanging out. It was like when you're, when you're eight years old and like somebody's being like mean to you and then all of a sudden you're best friends in like three seconds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> no, I'm gonna beat you up, be my best friend. Okay. Like it was literally like that, you know what I mean? And then we went back to my house. I had a little basement apartment down the street on Sunset Boulevard behind Tower Video that's no longer there. And um, we just jammed. We started, I had a couple of acoustics, a bunch of people. I used to bring everybody back to my apartment after the rainbow closed. And um, he came and we just started jamming and people started singing along. And that was, that's kind of, that's exactly how our musical relationship bloomed as well. Like that moment. So it was just kind of all downhill from there. <laughs> yeah. It depends on how you look at it. Um, I mean, like, that's we've really been best friends ever since. Yeah, it went so naturally. It wasn't like he wanted to hire you as a basis. You guys just right. met at like, a bar. Never, like, I, man, fucking, like, we were friends for 10 years before I started playing with him for real. Yeah, that's crazy. There was never any, like, when am I going to be in one of your bands? Like, I didn't give a <laughs> shit about stuff. You know what I mean? Like, he's my brother. I love him. And that's the bottom line. And even better that you get to make music with him now. That's great. Total fucking gift, you know? Awesome. I'm really grateful for that stuff. Yeah, and about that, can you tell us more about uh, CMF2? I know that's uh, coming up um, someday soon. No. No? <laughs> Guess we'll have to wait and see then. <laughs> Patience. Uh, <laughs> Patience, indeed. Yeah. Seems like that's the center of the say, earth now. I will say that Corey's on fire, you know? Awesome. Like he doesn't just like to sit around and hang out, you know? Like he's always working, whether he's mentally or physically you know so there's always songs coming there's always shit being recorded there's always stuff happening you know so for sure and on another 10 records coming soon <laughs> awesome yeah i love the first one so um hopefully cmf2 will be just as good if not better um really i don't really not like most of what Corey writes so right yeah you know. It's, it's just another gift because I played on a bunch of stuff that I can't stand and would do it just for the money. And, you know, that's not really why I started playing music. So it's now, now you have something to be proud of, you know, really a blessing to be able to play in something and be happy and like love the music. Like I still listen to it. It's on my shuffle in my music. You know what I mean? Like none of my other bands are in my shuffle. Trust me. Wow. Well, that's a big compliment to uh, to Corey's music as well. It's because I'm a picky asshole. <laughs> True. Well, and and about uh, about your music, I noticed you also release some singles yourself. I um, do. Are you planning to make an album yourself someday? I am. I have enough for an album now. I just it's not my time yet. You know, like I'm right. still I'm still writing. I'm still developing my writing skills. You know, I'm still really cavemanish about writing which i love i love my style i love the way i do things but i'm almost there like i feel the my readiness 
almost ready. So that's going to come out soon, you know, within the next year or two. I'm gonna... Awesome. Patience. Patience. <laughs> um, and there's a bit of a more random question. Uh, if you could rid the world of one thing, what would it be? Punishers. <laughs> I mean, like, I'll tell you what a Punisher is in a second, but I mean, COVID, obviously, which a lot of people don't think is real, but whatever. I know a bunch of people's moms that have died from it and yeah. have died from it and stuff and categorize it however you want. I just want the world to open up and I want it to be rid of the normal stuff that everybody wants the world to be rid of fucking pandemics and racism and just weird people trying to man, I don't even know how to explain it. You know what I mean? They're all like punishers and punishers are the fucking people that are waiting by your bus door for fucking nine hours before you wake up or when you're in the venue or when they come out and, and you know, they're just hounding you and hammering you with pig. They want to take pictures. They want to ask questions. They want to have autographs. They want to have pics. They want guitar pics. They want this. They want that. They, want that. they never leave you alone. If you message, if you respond to their messages, God forbid you respond to their messages on Instagram, you have to fucking nine paragraphs later they're <laughs> about how Corey changed their life and i don't give a shit you know what i mean like but like yeah. that how like half of america is to me right now i'm just like oh my god what's happening i can't i can't even deal so i just want everybody to chill the fuck out is really all i wish for the, for the world right now everybody yeah. chill out let's let this shit pass and let's just get on with how it's supposed to be you know exactly this isn't how it's supposed to be you know like i teach my kid not to be mean to his friends i teach my kid not to make fun of people you, you know even though i do sometimes but like <laughs> i teach my kid the right way to live you know and hope that he just listens and and emulates that behavior that i'm trying to teach him and um that's kind of what i want for the world too you know i'm trying to be a better person every day I wake up and try to be a better person. And I have been become way better than I was. I'm, I've changed so much in my life, you know? So like, I just want that for the world. That was a really long answer. I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's all good. That's all good. Yeah, that's uh, it's a good answer. Informative for sure. Um, so Very a, informative I am. What's that? Very informative I am. <laughs> for sure. Uh, here are some, uh, some, some easier and shorter questions. Um, I have I have three of them, and you basically can choose between two musicians. So first up, uh, Motorhead or Metallica? Metallica. And why is that? I like I I mean, come on. Everybody that wears a Motorhead shirt probably knows three Motorhead songs. Honestly, why? I might get some shit for this. I don't really give a fuck because I've never really cared what anybody thinks. I only like four Motorhead songs, maybe. Wow. Mm -hmm. I really do. Like, I love Lemmy. I think he's a fucking rock god. I respect everything he's ever done. I don't like, yeah, I mean, it's just fucking regular old rock, hard rock, you know? It all sounds, kind of sounds the same. So three, four songs, I'm good, you know? But Metallica, I mean, fuck. You've got Kill 'Em All, which is completely different than Ride the Lightning, which is completely different than Master of Puppets, which is all three are fucking iconic records and should have sold equally just as many as the Black Album sold, which I believe is over a hundred million. You know what I mean? But yeah. those first three records fucking established dominance. And they just, I remember, like, I just remember when that shit came out, I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Nothing ever did that to me to this day. Nothing ever, you know, 30 years, 40 years later, nothing's come out that I've been like, Like I still play that shit. Like I still play, like I warm up to the Kill 'Em All record sometimes when I'm on the road, you know, like an hour before a show, I'll just put that shit on my iPad. <laughs> and it's still hard to play 40 years later. For sure, yeah. Yeah, it's it's, so uh, I, it's held up really well. Metallica, definitely. I think uh, even Metallica would disagree with your answer though. Like they okay. would even choose Morad, but. Uh... That's the you know that's the whole purpose of having an opinion right yeah for sure and that's I, i wish more people would understand that nowadays like everyone wants to agree with everything but that you don't have to i don't fucking care what anybody thinks of me trust me you can exactly 
you can tell by my Instagram that I just don't yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I mean, that's the way it should be. Um, then Alice Cooper or Ozzy Osbourne? Ozzy Osbourne. I never liked Alice Cooper. I also, again, I respect Alice. Yeah. Great makeup rock guy, whatever he does, the stage theatrics is cool. I think it's an awesome thing. Um, but I mean, fucking Ozzy is Ozzy. I mean, there would be no Alice Cooper if there was no Black Sabbath. And right. There would be no Black Sabbath if there was no Ozzy, you know? For sure. Ozzy solo, unbelievable, you know? For sure. Mark at the Moon, Blizzard of Oz, Diary of a Madman. I mean, it's all just unbelievable. I couldn't tell you the name of one Alice Cooper record. My good, like, Tooch will probably fucking kill me for saying that shit. <laughs> um, and then last one, Nickelback or Imagine Dragons? I wouldn't know either one of those bands if <laughs> slapped me in the face with their records. <laughs> I have no idea what Imagine Dragons sound like. And, of course, I know what Nickelback sounds like because they get so much shit for sucking. But Yeah. I mean... I guess I would just go like in a fight, right? I guess Imagine Dragons would win the fight if they were in a fight Nickelback. But if both of them teamed up and tried to fight CMFT, they would fucking lose. <laughs> Big time. Yeah, we would kick the shit out of them. <laughs> um, and what are some of your favorite horror movies? I'm almost 50 years old. And um, so I grew up watching you know, the Friday the 13th and the Halloweens and um, just all that shit, you know? Like I grew up in Woodstock, New York, which is uh, in the woods. And when we were kids, Friday nights, like on ABC or Channel 5, I don't remember which channel, but they would have horror night. They would have horror movies on Friday nights at like eight o'clock. And it would be, it would be like Friday the 13th or whatever or like scanners or some shit, you know what I mean? And like, so I'd go to my friend Scott, Scott lived here, I lived here. This is in my first book, by the way. I would watch Friday the 13th, right? And then 10 o'clock, his mom would come in the den and be like, Jason, it's time to go home. And I'd be like, oh, fuck. And then <laughs> I would go out the back door of Scott's house and turn the porch light on and he'd go, see you later, dude. And he'd slam the door and he'd shut the porch light off. And I would have to fucking run home through the woods <laughs> after just watching Friday the 13th at 10 years old. And when you're running like that through woods, you're scaring other animals in the woods and they run as well. So it sounds like you hear, you hear sticks breaking and leaves rustling and you think someone's fucking chasing you. So it was just... So ever, like my point to this is that now when I watch those movies, I still get that same anxiety. Right. Corey. Man, Corey will tell you, anyone in our camp will tell you that I can't watch horror movies to this day without being scared shitless. Like he thinks it's the funniest thing in the world because anytime some <laughs> scare happens, <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> like we were literally holding hands in the movie theater when the Jessica Biel Friday the 13th. I mean, oh, you know, yeah. Like, this Chainsaw Massacre came out. We went to go see that at, at Man's Chinese, Harry Man's Chinese Theater. We went to go see it at Man's Chinese Theater. And uh, <laughs> we, we were so scared of Leatherface that we fucking just be like hold each other. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, so you're mostly a fan of like uh, the old slasher films? I'm actually watching uh, The Evil in Us right now. And I'm just waiting for, because man, there was a way that the 70s grain had an effect on the 45 minutes to in a horror movie, you know, like, especially, oh, can you hear me? Yeah. It says my internet connection is unstable. But in all the horror movies, you have to wait an hour before any shit goes down, you know? So you're just like sitting there yeah. watching terrible porn actresses and actors <laughs> fucking get naked or be a dick or fucking make fun of the fucking special kid in the you know like pumpkin yeah head. exactly <laughs> like sitting there like ah and uh but there's a way that they did it in the 70s and the early 80s where you're just i'm just captivated the whole time you know like the evil dead and all that shit you know like i'm just like 
gripped, even though they're not even fucking, they're swimming in the lake. And I'm like, man, that girl's bush is huge. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, there's something about the mood and atmosphere too in the old movies that just, yeah, yeah there's something about it in the, that is. I love it. I love it all. I sure. can't watch it in HD because it crisps everything up. And I'm like, ah, it's fucking weird. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and where do you hope to see yourself in 10 years? Oh, man. Five years ago, I would have told you dead. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I uh, hope to see my, in 10 years, I'd hope to see my kid, watch my kid graduate high school. Awesome. And, uh, still be with my brothers in CMFT. You know, we should be on our fifth record by then or so. And um, I'm really looking forward to a, to a long life, happy life and a long career with my buddies. You know, really Awesome. Cool. And what about your books? We have, uh, we have the three books out by then. Oh, yeah. My second book, I just got word from my publisher that it's coming. It's going to be released in the fall of 2021. Cool. Because pandemic, pandemic vibes. Yeah. Everything <laughs> up, you know? So I apologize for everybody that's been waiting forever for my second book to come out, but I promise it's fucking worth it because I've sent it to a couple of people that I really respect their opinion and care about. And they told me that it's way better than the first one, that my writing has improved. So yeah, I'm going to have about five, three or four more books out in the next 10 years for sure because I'm on fire with the writing as well. Awesome. Looking forward to that as well. Thanks, man. Is uh, there anything you would like to add to the interview? No, I think I've said enough. For sure. I guess it sums it all up then. Yeah, um, and to everybody watching, thank you so much for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video. See ya. Thanks. You have waited this long. Hell no longer awaits. Hell.